rising temperatures are having a severe impact on the world we live in, mandating mitigation strategies and adaptation. For aviation, the focus needs to be on the urgency of how. The aerospace sector has to address climate priorities, harness digitization, and marshal advanced automation. Collaboration is critical and must extend across the broader ecosystem, now more than ever. The Whittle Laboratory at Cambridge University is home to a unique project that embodies the spirit of cross-sector collaboration, the Aviation Impact Accelerator. Two and a half years ago, the Prince of Wales Sustainable Markets Initiative held two round tables, one in the Whittle Laboratory and one in Clarence House. And they invited people from the whole sector and what we found in those meetings were people were talking past each other. Nobody understood the whole picture. And so Cambridge was asked to assemble a group of world experts to see if it could unlock change at a systems level. And the Aviation Impact Accelerator was born. The Aviation Impact Accelerator is now looking for ways to bring together the aerospace industry, governments, climate experts, and startups to tackle the climate challenges. The challenges of the aviation sector is at the moment it produces about 2% of world CO2 emissions, but when you include the non-CO2 effects, this rises to about 5%. But the real problem is that one single flight from London to New York produces about 986 kilograms of CO2, which is more than most people in Africa, Asia or South America produce in an entire year. Collaboration is so important because this is not just a technology problem. You need to understand human behavior. You need to understand the way business operates. You need to understand government policy. And only through bringing all of these together can we really accelerate change. And that is why the Aviation Impact Accelerator is working with experts from industry across the world and academic experts from around the world, as well as with government, to accelerate change. There are wider factors to consider for transitioning the industry, but there are also risks in only looking at the climate impacts of aviation. If we think about the job of transforming the aviation sector so it can become environmentally sustainable, that means a wholesale transformation of the system. It's not as simple as just taking one technology, one engine and swapping it out for another. We need to think about changing infrastructure, we need to think about changing business models, we need to think about the public acceptability. And we need to think about that not just for one country because aviation is fundamentally an international sector. So we need to see that change happening across the board, the whole ecosystem transforming all at the same time. So that's why we keep on talking about a whole ecosystem transformation of the system. Academia plays a very important role in bringing different stakeholders together, energising the entire aerospace ecosystem. In many ways, academia is the source of many of the innovations and creativity that are required to drive a net zero transition. And the challenge is not only how do we accelerate the development of those ideas and innovations, but also critically how we get them off the lab benches in universities and into real world deployment and scale up. And to do that requires radical collaboration. It requires the whole broad aviation sector coming together and really helping to co-design those solutions in the university research environment context, and then to help take and translate those ideas and innovations out into the real world. Academia has an enormously important role to play in the uh, net zero transition, not least by providing a really sound evidence base, which addresses both short and long-term issues. Uh, it's obviously a, a really critical role to play. And of course, the trust and transparency uh, for which academia is um, so highly regarded is obviously uh, a critical 
uh, aspect in all of this. The aerospace industry understands the power of cross-sector collaboration and realizes this is where real change can happen. No single organization can overcome successfully the challenges of decarbonizing flight, okay? So the, the challenge is too big. We must work together and at pace. So and more specifically, combining the networks of academia and industry, that's what makes the magic happen. That's where the brightest minds meet. And that's also where the toughest challenges can be overcome. The ecosystem approach really is the way to move forward. In reality, no business can do it on its own. We've learned certainly from COP that the ideal outcomes are ensuring that we look at broader governments, uh, broader business, energy, uh, and all the different sectors to ensure that we can actually collaborate uh, and develop insights together. Because ensuring that we can accelerate over this next decade is gonna be the critical path and only together can we do that. The energy sector is one of the industries that play a critical role in transitioning aviation to net zero. In terms of the role of the energy sector, they have a fantastic opportunity here to move the transition forward and accelerate the, the pace and the demonstration and the scale of opportunities that are there. I think the energy sector has already been at the front of transitions before, from wood to coal, from coal to gas, from gas to oil, and then into renewables. So they have a track record of being able to pull technologies and large scale projects together, to bring the capabilities and experience of different partners together, and to have that real long-term view to make sure that what we're building is fit for purpose, not just for today, but for the long term. And that actually taking a long term view will mean that we don't waste resources on opportunities that have a very short term or very small potential impact. But it's not only about the collaboration. Consumer trends play a crucial role for sustainable aviation. When we're thinking about industry and specifically airlines, for example, if they're going to invest in these new options for sustainable aviation, they need to know that consumer demand is there. So the sort of tools that might be developed, they might be helpful for consumers as well, but they're also helpful for industry in deciding, are they going to invest in these innovative new uh, sustainable aviation options? And in order to make that decision, they need to know what the market demand is likely to be, and therefore they need to know whether consumers want that. Because if consumers don't want sustainable aviation, maybe they don't want aviation at all because they want, they're want they worried about climate change and they prefer to travel in the UK. Then that's something that industry needs to know. But if there is this untapped demand for sustainable aviation, people are keen to travel, but they'd like to do it in a more sustainable way. It's a wonderful business opportunity. So it's not just about consumers. It's not just about industry. It's how the two come together. It's how the supply and the demand interact effectively. In order to harness the power of ecosystem and facilitate the net zero transition, the Aviation Impact Accelerator developed evidence-based models and visualizations that map the whole aviation system and show how it can be accelerated to sustainability. The emissions comparison tool that the Aviation Impact Accelerator uh, is uh, launching uh, at Farnborough is um, particularly useful for um, industry to look at uh, the holistic systems of systems approach and see all the way across the different fuel options and different technology options, all the way across the system in terms of impact from fuel generation right through to the emissions out of the back end of the aircraft. And this is really useful because it helps them to pinpoint where the uncertainties are, so where the risks are, and where they're coming from. So, for instance, if you look at blue hydrogen production, which is hydrogen made from fossil fuels with carbon capture, it highlights there's a big uncertainty about the amount of carbon that's captured and the amount of methane that's leaked, and if this isn't properly managed, this can make it worse than fossil fuels. So it's it's immensely useful in highlighting where the uncertainties, i.e. really where the risks are in the system and where the potential pitfalls are. The Emissions Comparison Tool is only one of the projects the aerospace industry 
can use to accelerate change to net zero. The Journey Impact Simulator also provides the data necessary to achieve it. But how does it work? Journey Impact Simulator is a web-based tool uh, and it allows people in industry, people interested in policy, but even people in, in the general public, people from school, school students, uh, research students at universities, to explore and engage with the, the challenge of decarbonizing aviation. Here we can simply hit simulate your journey and it takes us to a page, it looks a little bit like Google Flights or Kayak.com where you'd be planning a journey online. But the difference here is that we're simulating and modeling flights in the future and trying to determine the climate impact and the resource requirement of those flights. So the, uh, a, a flight that I like to demonstrate is a flight from London Heathrow to uh, JFK, New York. So what the model does Behind the scenes here is we have models for a, a very large range of different aviation technologies. It's going to search through different technologies and look for technologies that minimize the climate impact for this particular journey. But when we do that, we can choose our different priorities. And what I've got selected here is electricity use. And that's because the future fuels are likely to require large amounts of electricity. We can allow the model to be more or less optimistic about the different future technologies. So we can set a level of optimism for the aircraft and for the fuels. And behind the scenes here, we've got even more choices here about the size of the airport network, the uh, electricity sources, so we can change the, the types of electricity we're using is an average over a year. To create these unique tools, the Aviation Impact Accelerator has been working with experts from industry and academia from around the world. MIT and Cambridge have a, a really long and deep history of collaboration in aerospace engineering. In fact, if you go back 20 years, the two universities collaborated together to design an aircraft that was effectively silent at the aircraft, airport boundary. And that was a big technical achievement and shaped the way the industry thought. But fast forward 20 years and today's challenge is about climate and getting to net zero. In many ways, a much bigger challenge that really needs both teams to work together more than ever before. And we know from historical examples that when you put together talented teams with diverse viewpoints, they can come up with better ideas and, and implement them in more rigorously and more impactfully than either one team could alone. Satavia is a data and analytics company based in Cambridge, and we're working with um, a number of airlines, including Etihad in Abu Dhabi, and we're working directly with the flight um, dispatch teams um, to produce more climate friendly flight plans that the airline then flies and these flight plans actually prevent the clouds the aircraft make the contrails and so after the flight has taken place we go in and verify that the science and the forecasting was correct and we calculate the climate forcing that we prevented on a flight by flight basis and we're also working in parallel on a method uh, for accreditation to to offer ultimately carbon credits to the operators. In terms of our collaboration with the Aerospace Impact Accelerator, we've been uh, working closely on the science so that we are implementing the best available science into the model that's been developed to analyze the non-CO2 climate impact of aviation. And this is being used to inform policy and hopefully drive through regulation that's going to um, help to reduce aviation's overall climate impact. We're collaborating with the AIA by providing the environment in which they can do this trade study and also providing expertise on how to build models. For the AIA, there are lots of stakeholders that need to interact with this model. Engineering executives, policy makers, fleet operators, the general public. We've made sure that they have a front end that's a web page that's therefore accessible to all people. What sits behind that is the model built in MATLAB. Um, and we've helped them set up the infrastructure to present and run the model in this way. We've also helped to ensure that the models are fast to run. That allows them to run over millions of design points to really understand the trade-offs as you vary the parameters. The Emissions Comparison Tool and the Journey Impact Simulator are now finding the practical implementations across the entire aerospace ecosystem. When it comes to aviation zero emission technologies, we must remind ourselves that there is no panacea, there is no silver bullet type of solution. So that's why at Rolls-Royce, our strategy builds on three pillars. 
first of all, increasing efficiency, every single drop of fuel saved, every gram of emissions avoided counts. So we're doing that right now. For example, our ultrafan technology demonstrator will be 25% more efficient than our first Trans 700 engines. Secondly, we need to continue leveraging sustainable aviation fuels. By the end of 2023, we will have demonstrated all our existing Trent engines will be compatible with 100% SAF. And all of our new products will be net zero by 2030. But let's not be blind to the fact that it will take trillions of dollars of investment to make SAF available, affordable, and produced sustainably. So we see this as a stepping stone on our path to net zero. Third, third pillar, third generation technologies. We are exploring how hydrogen could be used to decarbonize flight. This has the most complex challenges, but also the most potential. And having broken world records with our spirit of innovation, all electric aircraft, we are now reading across all our learnings in that on that project, deploying our technologies across all electric and hybrid electric aircraft with partners like Vitero and Technam. And the aviation impact accelerator model will allow us to improve our understanding of really which technology offers the optimum solution for which range of market sector and how these um, change as the technology evolves. Both tools will be featured at the Aerospace Global Forum 2022, underpinned by the world's leading aerospace institutions, ADS and Farnborough International. AGF will provide truly global platform and ecosystem to discuss and catalyze initiatives focused on scalable, realistic green growth.